Hello viewers, Raghad Aruna taking you through the story for A Level Physics Paper 2. And this video is going to go through the topic of refraction of light through lenses. So this video is suitable for students in both Senior 5 and Senior 6 offering physics as part of their combination. So before I proceed, let's first look at the course outline of this paper. So physics part 2 is divided into four parts. The first part is geometrical optics where two questions come from these topics. The second part is physical optics where two questions come from these topics. The third part is electrostatics and electricity where three questions come from these topics. And the last part is magnetism and alternating current where three questions come from these topics. So in this video, we are going to look at this. So electrostatics and electricity, it is complete. And now we are on geometrical optics. So this part, this part, and this part, we are complete. And now we are going to refraction of light through lenses. So this video is connected to the one of refraction of light at plane surfaces. So if you have, sorry, at, at curved surfaces. So if you are not yet covered this, video of number two refraction of light at curved surfaces it is advisable that you first cover it then you can go to lenses because curved surfaces is curved mirrors and now this is lenses on this platform we are interested in the calculation bit of it but clear notes work examples and trial questions are available in this book mastering a level physics paper 2 so if you're interested in the copy, contact the author on any of these two contacts. And a complete set of physics has three books. There is physics paper one, physics paper two, and the topical question bank. For principal mathematics, there are also three books, math paper one, math paper two, and the topical question bank. Subsidiary math, it is only one book, copy one book, and that is mastering a level subsidiary mathematics paper one the rest are for all levels so if you need any of these books contact the author on any of these two contacts so now shall start our topic of refraction of light through lenses So by definition, a lens is a piece of glass or plastic, bound or plastic bounded by one or two spherical surfaces. And there are two types of lenses. Remember under curved mirrors, there are also two types. There was a concave mirror and a convex mirror. Same applies to lenses. There is a convex lens and a concave lens. So there are two types of lenses. The convex lens is also called a converging lens and a concave lens is also called a diverging lens. So now let's first look at this convex lens. So a convex lens or a converging lens, it is called a converging lens and the reason is because it bends light rays inwards as we shall see in the illustration. And in its shape, it is thinner at the edges and thicker in the middle. So it is in this form. In the middle, it is a little thicker. And at the edges, it is thin. So there are various types of convex lenses which you shall illustrate in this slide. One, the first one is called a biconvex lens. And it's of that shape. So like we said, this one curves light rays inward. So we shall, we shall have a parallel beam, a beam parallel to the principal axis of the lens. And that will be refracted to converge at the principal focus. So it bends light rays inwards. For the concave lens, it bends light rays outwards, as we shall see. But now we shall have we are first looking at the convex lens. 
So the first type of a convex lens is called a biconvex lens. I think you can see it has a symmetrical line. A plan convex lens is of that shape. It's as if it's half of this biconvex lens. And for it, the power rays will come and hit this curved surface. The flat one, there is no refraction because it, the light rays are incident at 90 degrees. Then at this curved surface, that's where rays are refracted to meet the principal focus. Okay, then the third part or the third type of a convex lens is called a converging meniscus. So this one is of that shape. So rays will come and meet this other refracting surface. The first one, we don't, we the refraction is negligible, so at our level we shall make it straight until it reaches this part. However, there is refraction, but at our level we shall just make a straight line to meet this part, and that it's after that that refraction will take place. To pass through the principal focus. So those are the three types of a convex lens. And now we shall look at the symbols for convex lens which can be used in ray diagrams. So that is one way of representing a convex lens in ray diagrams and the second way can be in this form. So when you see these ones, arrows up and down, it means it is now a convex lens. What about a concave lens? So a concave lens is called a diverging lens. And, in, and for it is the opposite, it is thinner in the middle and thicker at the edges. Unlike a convex lens which was thick, thin at the edges and thick in the middle. So it is just the opposite as we shall see in the diagram. And there are also different types of concave lenses. Let's look at them. The first is a biconcave lens. So like we said, it is thin at the, in the middle and thick at the edges. So these ones, the light rays just appear to come from the principal focus. So when they hit this line, they will be refracted outwards in such a way that they appear to come from a common point, which is known as the principal focus. I think you realize that these rays which are extrapolated backwards are dotted. That was the biconcave lens. What about a plano concave lens? It is half of this biconcave lens. So rays parallel will hit this other surface and that is where refraction will happen, will occur. They will be refracted outwards and they will appear to come from a common point which is the principal focus. Okay, then the third part is a diverging meniscus. So it's so of that form, still rays parallel. At this point, there is also refraction, but like we said, under converging meniscus, we assume it's negligible and refraction happens at the second phase. So they will diverge to appear coming from a common point, capital F, which is the principal focus. So those are the three types of concave lenses. Now we shall go to the symbols which can be used to represent concave lens in ray diagrams. So the first one is that you draw a simple, a small shape of a concave lens in the middle. Another form, 
can be in the, can be that. Remember for convex lens, it was in this form. Now this one, it is in this form. Okay. Then another way can be in that form. So any of these three shapes represent a concave lens. Whatever is easier for you to use is what you use. Okay, so now that you have seen the types of concave lenses, let's talk about something called power of a lens. So the power of a lens is simply the reciprocal of its focal length expressed in meters. In other words, we get 1 over f. When f is in meters, that is already power of a lens. And the SI unit of power of a lens is called diopters. That is capital D. So with that we shall go through this question. Question 1 which came from your neighbor of 2017. Paper 2, question 2D. And it says, find the power of a lens of focal length 15 centimeters. So there we have to remember that focal length has to be in meters. So come and convert these 15 centimeters to meters by applying by 10 to power negative 2. Then 1 over that will give you that as the required power of a lens. Unit is diopter. Now we shall go to what we call image formation by lenses. So under curved surfaces, we saw the rules or the rays that can be drawn to locate the position of an image under a curved mirror. Now we shall look at the, also the rules that can be followed to locate the position of an image or under lenses. For curved mirrors, there was reflection. For lenses, there is now refraction. So the nature, position, and size of images formed by lenses can be got by using any two of the following rays, all drawn from the top of the object, which is represented by a straight line with an arrow perpendicular to the principal axis. I think you already saw this under curved surfaces. So, for lenses, there is refraction, so the rules will be a little different but similar. The first rule says a ray parallel and close to the principal axis is refracted to pass through the principal focus capital F. I think let's first illustrate that one. So this capital C is the center of the lens. Capital F is the principal focus, principal focus, and this 2F means twice the principal focus. So we shall draw our object. Then we shall draw a ray parallel and close to the principal axis. It will be refracted to pass through the principal focus. Like that. Okay, so that is one ray. Then num ray number two shall come as that a ray through the principal focus, capital F, is refracted parallel to the principal axis. Refracted parallel. So we shall draw a ray through the principal focus. At this point, it should be refracted parallel to the principal axis. That is ray, num ray number two. Then ray number three says, a ray through the optical center C is undeviated. So a ray through the principal center, optical center is undeviated. As you can see there, it's just from here it passes here, it is still a straight line. There's no refraction. 
So those are the three rays and this will be the position of the image. Therefore, shall just draw a line with an arrow to represent the position of the image. So that is how they can locate the position, nature and size of an image under converging lenses. And like we said, under covered mirrors, even here we shall see that the more the object goes closer to the lens, the more it moves, the more its image moves away from the lens and the more it is magnified. Thank you. Remember that this note was also used under covered mirrors and it was so, so helpful. Even in lenses, it is very helpful, as we shall see. So that was convex lens. What about a concave lens? Still, there are also rays that we should be drawn. Only that in this case, they just appear to come from the principal focus. So the first ray says, a ray parallel and close to the principal axis is refracted in such a way that it appears. So for a concave lens, rays just appear to come from the principal focus. Okay, then the second one says, a ray through the principal focus, F, is refracted parallel to the principal axis. Okay, then ray number three, a ray through the optical center C is undeviated. So now we shall draw a ray diagram to represent these rays. So that's the symbol for a concave lens. Principal focus is there. Then we shall draw an object. That is the ray number one, parallel and close to the principal axis, refracted to appear coming from the principal focus. So from there with the second one, which is easier, usually the first and the second one are easier because the, sec the, the first and third, because the second one involves drawing a parallel line after refraction, which is a little hectic. So for this case, we shall draw first and second, which are very common. So the second ray, it passes through the optical center and deviated, and this will be the point of intersection and that will be the position of the image. So that image is virtual because this line is dotted and it's upright. So here, unlike for a convex lens, when it comes to a concave lens, no matter where the object is placed along the principal axis, the image formed is virtual, upright, diminished and between the principal focus and the optical center. Remember for a convex lens, we said the position of the object matters. When the object is closer to the lens, then the image will be further away from the lens and magnified. But when it comes to a concave lens, no matter what the position of the object, the image will always be virtual upright diminished and between the principal focus and the optical center okay now under curved mirrors we looked at what we call mirror formula and linear magnification when it comes to lenses the same formula is used but now we call it a thin lens formula we no longer call it a mirror formula because these are not mirrors they're lenses so you should call it a thin lens formula and f represents the focal length of the lens u represents object distance of the lens v represents image distance of the lens but the lens is thin that is the assumption we make in at this level so at this level we assume that the lenses are thin lenses so in a question they will not tell they may not specify that the lens is thin but you always know that in A level, we assume the lenses to be thin. OK, 
Okay, then we also looked at the X formulas for linear magnification and they're also the same for lenses. So the first one was image height over object height, which is also used in lenses. Image distance over object distance, which is also used. V over F minus one, which is also used. And the last one is the reciprocal of magnification being equal to one u over f minus one so any of the four can also these all these four can be used under lenses just as we saw under curved mirrors that's why i told you that if you have not yet watched the video of refraction of light at curved surfaces i encourage you to first watch it then you can easily understand this video so those formulas shall go through a number of questions still using the knowledge which we got from curved mirrors so these questions will be grouped in two parts based on the format of the way they are being set now the first format or the first case is for questions involving only one converging lens and it was set in 1993 but to question 2c and it says a converging beam of light in the shape of a cone with a vertex angle of 20 sorry 40 degrees falls on a circular diaphragm of diameter 10 20 centimeters when a converging lens is fixed in the diaphragm the new vertex angle is 73 degrees. Calculate Roman 1 the focal length of the lens and Roman 2 the displacement of the vertex of the cone. So here we shall need to illustrate. So we shall come and draw. Show our converging lens or a convex lens. Then we shall draw a Par, uh, sorry, it's not par, a converging beam. This is the beam which is converging. And they said in absence of this lens, the beam will have a vertex of 40 degrees. So this would be the vertex 20, 20, they shine the middle to make a total of 40 degrees. But because of this converging lens, this beam will be refracted inwards to form a new vertex angle of 73 degrees. Now 73, when you divide into 2, you come up with 36.5, 36.5. So that when you add the 2, you get the 73 degrees, which is given in the question. They also told us that the diameter is 20, meaning from your tier is 10 and from your tier is 10. So that means that now this one is the object and this is the image. Now by from Sokatoa, we know that tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. So when I stand here, tan is opposite, which is 10, over adjacent, which is from B to D. And when I make BD the subject, I'll come up with 27.47 centimeters. So I've now got the object distance. What about the image distance? So there I'll use this right angle triangle and say tan 36.5 is equal to 10 over BC. So let's see that in the next slide. So tan 36.5 is equal to 10 over BC, therefore BC will give you. 13.51 so now I have the object distance and the image distance so this object distance is virtual because I think you remember the lines were dotted meaning the object is virtual but the image was real so shall come and substitute from in the thin lens formula and come up with the value of f this value is the expression for 1 over f that means that f is the reciprocal of this which is 1 over 0 
0.0376 to give you 26.58. So now we shall go to Roman, to Roman 2, they wanted the displacement of the vertex. So it will be BD minus BC, we know BD, we know BC, it gives you 13.96, and that is what they wanted. That was a question consisting only one converging lens. What if a question has two converging lenses? How do you deal with it? So such a questions, one of them is in 2019, paper 2, question 2, a Roman 2, and says, a small object is placed at a distance of 30 centimeters from a converging lens of focal length 10 centimeters. Calculate the distance from the first lens where the second converging lens of focal length 40 must be placed in order to produce an erect image of the same size as the object. Same size means magnification is one. So shall see, we shall make a sketch of these two lenses. One is focal length 10, another one is focal length 40. Here and here. Okay, then we have an object, then we shall draw a red diagram, ray parallel to the principal axis is refracted to pass through the principal focus. Another ray which passes through the optical center is undeviated. So with that we can locate the first image due to the first converging lens. I'm sure you come and draw it. But it is inverted, so yet the question wants an erect image. So that means that when these rays meet this converging lens, they are refracted further to form uh, an erect image. And that will be the position of the erect image. So the object distance was 30 and this one you don't know it, we shall call it V1, the image distance due to the first converging lens. Then this becomes the object distance due to the second converging lens and that becomes the image distance due to the second converging lens. Okay, so the good thing we know F we know u, we can get v1. So for the first lens, f is that, u is that, so we can use thin lens formula to get v1. So v1 is the reciprocal of this, which will be 15 centimeters. So for the final image, to be the same size as the object, magnification has to be 1. Then remember that magnification is equal to m1 times m2. Therefore, m1 is v1 over u1 and m2 is v2 over u2. And this m is 1. So you know v1, you have calculated it, you know u1, it was given. Therefore, you can get v2 in terms of u2. Then for the second lens, we shall still use thin lens formula, substitute for f, substitute for we don't substitute for v2 because here v2 is in terms of u2. So substitute to have only u2 as the only unknown. Then simplify, cross multiply and make u2 the subject. And that will be the x value of u2. So the question says, calculate the distance from the first lens. So they want this separation. Separation will be V1 plus V2. So I'll come and say that. The separation will be V1 plus V plus U2. They have a common substitute V1, U2 to give me 75. And that's what they wanted. 
Question 2 says an object is placed 6 cm from a thin converging lens A of focal length 5 cm. Another thin converging lens B of focal length 15 cm is placed coercially with A and 20 cm from it on the side away from the object. Find the position nature and magnification of the final image. So we shall come as that for lens A we have V1, we have F meaning we can get V1. So 1 over V1 is 1 over 30, the reciprocal gives you V1 as 30 centimeters. So now that we have, we have the value of V1, we can now illustrate on the on the red diagram so we have those two lenses a and b we have a point object so rays from the point object are refracted by lens a in that form and in absence of this lens b the rays would have gone up to here so that becomes the image one and which which acts as the object to the second lens, just as we had done for curved mirrors. So at this point, they are refracted further inwards to meet at this point, and that is the final image. So the object distance was six, it was given here. Then the image distance, we have already got it here as 30 due to the first lens. Then the separation. Separation was given as 20. Therefore, this balance will be 30 minus 20 to give you 10. And the final position of this image, we don't know it, so we shall call it V. Therefore, for lens B, we know that U, for this lens, the image, sorry, the image of the first lens is the object of the second lens. So, this will be the image distance. It is negative because these lines are, do these lines are dotted, meaning it is virtual. Focal length was given as 15. So, you can use thin lens formula to get the value of V2. And V2 will be equal to 6 centimeters. Then we shall come and say that based on this red diagram or based on the value of V2, if V2 was negative, the final image would be virtual. But V2 is positive, meaning the final image is real. Okay, that is one. Two, it is formed six centimeters beyond lens B. So they want the position, nature, and magnification of the final image. So now we need, we have got the position, which is 6 centimeters beyond lens B. We have got the nature, which is real. Now we are left with magnification. So magnification, we shall come and say, it's given by M1 times M2, which is U1, V1 over U1 for M1 and V2 over U2 for M2. V1 is that, U1 is that, V2 is that, U2 is that which gives you 3 as the magnification. Therefore, the final image is 3 times the size of the object. That was question 2. Now, question 3 says, a lens forms the image of a distant object, not this word, distant object, on a screen 30 centimeters away. Where should the second lens of focal length 30 centimeters be placed so that the screen has to be moved 8 centimeters towards the first lens for the new image to be in focus. So this is a little funny, so we shall have to sketch. So let the second lens L2 be placed at a distance D from the first lens. So we shall come and make our sketch.
So we have the first lens, then the second lens, L2. The distant rays from a distance object are parallel to the principal axis. They will be refracted by the first lens to converge at the principal focus. So in absence of this, these rays will converge, would have converged to the principal focus of lens L1. But because of this lens, they will be refracted further inward to meet at this position I2. So we know that from here, T is, will be equal to focal length of L1, which was 30. Sorry, this is not this one, this 30, it is this 30 here. Then the separation, we don't know it, but we said let it be D. Then the displacement, they told you, it will be moved 8 centimeters towards the first lens. So initially it was here, it has to be moved 8 centimeters towards the first lens, which is here. That is why you are seeing 8 here. Then the image distance or the final image, we don't know it, so we shall call it V. Okay, so now we shall start using lens L2. We know that U is negative. Remember, for this lens, the object is here. And the this object distance from here up to here, which is V plus 8. But because these rays are dotted, it is virtual. That's why there is a negative. Then the focal length was given as 30. Therefore, I'll use the thin lens formula, substitute. Now we have one unknown, which is V, so we have to look for a way of making it the subject. One shall get LCM. Open the brackets of the denominator, and here yeah, these ones cancels, remain with only 8. Then you cross multiply. Now that is a quadratic. When you solve it, you have two values of v. One is 12, another one is negative 20. So for a real image, v cannot be negative. Therefore, the positive one is the correct answer. But we know that the whole of this separation, this 30 is equal to d plus v plus 8. So d is here. V we have got as 12 and 8 is here. Everything is equal to 30. In that, you can be able to get the value of D. And that's what they wanted. So that has been case 2. Now, case 3 will involve questions which have one converging lens and one diverging lens. So what you have been looking at has been questions involving two converging lenses. But what if there is one converging lens and one diverging lens? How can you deal with such questions? So that is what we are going to look at in this case 3. Question 1 came from your neighbor 1999, paper 2, question 2b, and it says, A lens, L2, casts a real image of a distant object on a screen placed at a distance 15 centimeters away. When another lens, L2, is placed 5 centimeters beyond lens L1, the screen has to be shifted by 10 centimeters further away to locate the real image formed. Determine the focal length and the type of the lens L2. Okay, so note that the lens must be a diverging lens since the screen has to be moved further away to receive the new image. Remember, a diverging lens is the one which refracts rays outward, unlike a converging lens. So therefore, if it was supposed to be moved closer, it would have been a converging lens. But because the rays are being moved further away, it becomes a diverging lens. Therefore, you come and draw our sketch. 
So you have already answered this part where they wanted you to state the type of lens L2. It is already a diverging lens. Now what you want to answer is focal length of lens L2. So distance means rays should be parallel to the principal axis. They will be refracted by this inward. In absence of this diverging lens, they would have met at that point. They would have converged at that point. But because of this lens, they will be refracted outward. That's why they are initially they were here, but now they are away. To meet at the point I2. So this will be now the final image. So from here to here is equal to the focal length of lens L1. And if you read the question, lens L1, let me see. You said cast a real image of a distance object on a screen at a distance 15 centimeters away. So that is where the 15 comes from. Then the separation they told you L2 is 5 centimeters beyond L1. That becomes the separation. Therefore, the balance will be 15 minus 5 to give you 10. And this axis, or oh, the displacement is 10 because they said it has to be shifted by 10 centimeters further away. It was here, then it was shifted further away by 10 centimeters, which is here. So that means that for lens L2, object distance, using this object distance is from here up to here, which is 10. It is virtual, that is why there is negative. Then the image is from here up to here, which is 10 plus 10, to give you 20. Now I have image distance, object distance, I can use thin lens formula to get the focal length. So focal length is negative because it is a diverging lens. That was question one. Question two came from UNEB 1992, paper two, question four, question two B and says, light from a distant object is incident now this at distant is incident on a converging lens of focal length 7 cm placed 4 cm in front of a diverging lens of focal length 2.5 cm determine the position nature and nature of the image of the object so still we shall need to make a sketch Come and draw the converging lens and the diverging lens. Then rays from a distant object are parallel to the principal axis. And they are refracted by lens 1, the first lens. To So in absence of this one, they would have converged at the principal focus of the first lens, which is here. But because of this diverging lens, they will be refracted away outward and they will appear to come from this point which is now that will be the position of the final image which is virtual so the distance from here up to here is the same as the focal length which is seven Then the separation is 4. Then this balance is 7 minus 4, which is 3. And this one is the image distance, which we don't know yet. So you can say that for this diverging lens, the, we know the focal length and we know the object distance. Therefore, I can use thin lens formula to get the image distance as negative 15. So because of this negative, that negative is the reason why this time around the I2 is virtual. If this was positive, it means it would have been formed away from the first image. 
but now because it is negative it means it was virtue so we shall say they wanted the position and nature so the final image is virtue that is the nature and position it is here 15 centimeters in front of the diverging lens so the diverging lens is here in front of it 15 centimeters That was question two. Question three came from your name of 1996, paper two, question two B. It says, a converging lens of focal length 20 centimeters is placed coercially with a diverging lens of focal length 6 centimeters. Roman one. If the lenses are 12 centimeters apart, determine the position of the image of the distant object placed on the same side as the converging lens that was roman one roman two what is the nature of the image formed in roman one above so you shall still need a sketch so you shall draw the converging lens and the diverging lens then shall get our distant object and so here the rays will be con converged the rays will converge because of this converging lens then in absence of this lens they would meet at this principal focus of the lens of this converging lens but because of this second diverging lens they be refracted to appear coming from this point that means that even here the image is virtual as we shall see in the calculations so the from here tier is the focal length which was 20 then the separation was 12 of then the balance will be 20 minus 12 which is 8 and this one is object distance which we don't know yet so still for the diverging lens we know the focal length and we know the object distance therefore we can use the thinness formula to get the image distance so it is negative and that is why this image is virtual then roman 2 the nature of the image formed one the image formed is virtual they only wanted the nature so it is virtual full stop then question four came from your name of march 1998 part 2 question 1b and it says a convex lens and a concave lens convex is the converging and concave is the diverging of focal length this and this respectively are mounted coercially 7.5 centimeters apart with the concave lens facing a distant a distance object so this would be supposed to be a distant object find roman one the final position of the image and roman two the magnification of the image formed by the concave lens So we shall need to make a sketch, diverging lens and a concave and a convex lens. So the order of these lenses matter. The order matters. Because here they said it is the concave lens which is facing a distant object. That is why we put this concave lens here because the distant object will be the side. So the order of those lenses matter. So distant object rays are parallel. Then they are diverged by this first lens. And those rays will appear to come from a point which is I1. But because of this, they are refracted further 
to converge at a point I2, which is the position of the final image. So the separation is 7.5. Then the position of the first image from the diverging lens is 15 because these rays were parallel, meaning they'll be refracted to appear coming from the principal focus. Now, because the focal length of the concave lens was 15, it implies that this distance would be 15. That means that from here to here, we shall come up with this plus this to give you 22.5. And that would be the object distance of this second lens, or of the converging lens. The image distance of the final image, we don't know it, we shall call it V. Therefore, we shall come as that for the converging lens, we know F and we know U, meaning we can get V from the thin lens formula. Reciprocal gives the value of V as 9.84. So that will be the position of the image. What about the magnification? Now, this time the magnification they wanted was the one produced by only the concave lens. So, we shall get the image of the concave lens and the object of the concave lens to come up with that. Like I explained under curved mirrors, it is okay to put a negative here because if you see here, this U is negative. It is okay to put a negative and put a negative here or you ignore whatever is okay then question 5 came from your name 1994 paper 2 question 2d and it says a converging lens l1 of focal length 10 centimeters is placed at a distance y in front of a diverging lens l2 of focal length 20 centimeters an illuminated object is placed at a distance of 20 centimeters in front of L1. Find the final image, sorry, and the final image by L2 forms at the principal focus of L2. Okay, calculate Roman 1, the distance y, and Roman 2, the final magnification. So here, we shall come to that for the converging lens. We know F, we know U, meaning by thin lens formula, the value of V can be got. And when it is got, we can now make a sketch. So I have lens, the first lens, L1, and also the second lens, L2, which is diverging. We shall have an object there. Rays from the object will meet the lens, the first con the converging lens, which will converge the rays. And in absence of this diverging lens, the rays would converge at that point, I1. But because of this diverging lens, the rays are refracted or diverged to meet at point I2. And that will be the position of the final image. So the separation is y, which we don't know yet. And the object distance is 20. Because they said it is placed 20 centimeters in front of L1. Then we are we have a culture and we saw that the image due to the first converging lens is 20 centimeters, meaning from here up to here is 20. Then the, this one now will act as the object distance, which we don't know, to the diverging lens to give you an image. And that will be the image distance. The good thing we are told that the image distance is 20. Because that's what, according to this question, they said an illuminated object forms and the final image L by L2 
forms are the principal focus of L2 and the principal focus is 20 centimeters from the lens that is why this is now 20 so for the diverging lens we know the focal length we know the image distance I mean you can use thinness formula to get the object distance as negative 10 negative because it is virtual but know that the separation is equal to y plus this u2 in magnitude form therefore meaning that when i make y the subject it will be 20 minus 10 to give you 10 and that will be the separation of the lenses then for roman 2 for roman 2 they want the final magnification So final magnification is M1 times M2, which will give you in the end 2. That was question 5. Now, what about question 6? Question 6 came from your name of 2004, paper 2, question 2C, and it says, a, thinness, a thin converging lens, P, of focal length 10 cm, and a thin diverging lens, Q, of focal length 15 cm, are placed coercially 50 centimeters apart. If an object O is placed to 12 centimeters from P on the side remote from Chu, okay, find the position, nature, and magnification of the final image. Roman 2 sketch a red diagram to show the formation of the finite image now this word finite so if you use a point image the red diagram will not be okay so we have to use a finite object to get a finite image so for the converging lens we know f we know u meaning you can get v using a thin lens formula and that v will be equal to 60 centimeters now that we have got v we can make our sketch we have a converging lens and a diverging lens. So we shall come and put our finite object and draw a ray parallel to the principal axis to converge and pass through the principal focus. Then a ray through the optical center is undeviated. So in, at this point it is diverged further. So in absence of this lens, the rays would have converged at this point. And that would be the position of the first image I1. But because of this lens, the rays will be diverged. And that image, when it is diverged, they must, the image must... Now this line, if you look at it, it has no arrow, meaning it is, it is not a ray. It is a line to act as a guide to show you that all images after this refraction by the diverging lens must lie along the top of the image must the top of the image must lie along that line so if my rays are refracted you will realize that they will converge at a point which is along this line so when you are drawing this diagram make sure that the final image is along this line somewhere along that line because this is a sketch but the rules have to be followed so you come and say that my now my final image is there and it is real they wanted position so you shall get the position of i2 they wanted nature we have already seen that it is real and inverted and they also wanted the magnification so let's go ahead to get the position and then the magnification so the object distance was 12 centimeters look at this then the separation was 50 centimeters position of the first image was 60 meaning that from here to here has to be 60 but a good thing 50 was here so the balance is 10 that is why you are writing 10 there then the final image we don't know the distance so you just call it v2 and that's what we have to look for. 
So for the diverging lanes, F and U is known. Therefore, we can use thinness formula to get the value of V2 as 30. Therefore, magnification can be got M1 times M2, substitute and get the magnification as 15. And that's what they wanted. Then the sketch, if you look at this question, they ask for the sketch, but the good thing we have already drawn a sketch here, so redrawing it will be repetition. So what you do, just leave this sketch there, and that's what will be marked. So the image formed is real, 30 centimeters from Chu, and with a magnification of 15. So that has been case 3, which involved one converging lens and one diverging lens. But now case 4 will involve some extra. It has still one converging lens, one diverging lens, and a plain mirror. So question says, question 1 says, an illuminated object O, a convex lens L1 of focal length F1, a, con a concave lens L2 of focal length 20 centimeters and a vertical plane mirror capital M are arranged coercially in that order. Okay. An object O is placed 15 centimeters from L1. Then L2 is moved to and fro. L to and fro. L1 until the object coincides with its own image. Okay, the distance between L1 and L2 is found to be 10 centimeters. Find the value of F1. So this one still needs an illustration, but this word coincides. What does it mean? It means that. For coincidence between the object and this image, the ray from L2 strikes the mirror M plane mirror M plane mirror M normally normally means perpendicular. And when it strikes the mirror perpendicular, it implies that it is reflected back along the same path. That is what you should remember have in mind as you make your sketch. So let's go ahead and make our sketch of the red diagram. If you to understand what I'm talking about. So we have a converging lens, a diverging lens, and a plane mirror. So we shall have an object there. The rays from the object will meet the converging lens. And when they meet, they will be refracted. In absence of this diverging lens, the rays would converge at this point I1. But because of the diverging lens, the rays will be diverged and they will strike the plane mirror at 90 degrees. And it is for that reason, it is for that reason that rays is refracted back refracted back along the same path as you see here then same applies here it will come then same applies here it will come and then form an image at the point where the object was so this f2 means the principal focus of this mirror because this rays are parallel it implies that this image was at the principal focus So the object distance is 15. Then the separation of the two lenses was 10. And this distance is the focal length of L2. So shall come and say that the action of lens L2, when you consider L2, the image Formed by L1 is at the principal focus L2. We already seen that, meaning that object distance is 20 centimeters as we have seen. 
Then for length L1, we know that U1 is 15 and V1 is 10 plus 20. Let's see where it comes about. Remember for this lens, the image will be from here up to here. And that is 10 plus 20. To give you 30 centimeters. Therefore using thin lens formula, you can get the value of F as 10 centimeters. And that's what they wanted. Then case 5, that has been uh, questions involving converging lens, diverging lens, and a plane mirror. What if now we put aside a converging lens and a plane mirror and we bring in play a converging mirror? So that is what case 5 is about. So questions in case 5 will involve one diverging lens and one converging mirror. So question 1 came from your name, 2002 paper 2 question 1b and it says an object is placed 20 centimeters in front of a diverging lens placed coercially with a, con with a concave mirror of focal length 15 centimeters. When the concave mirror is 20 centimeters from the lens the final image coincides with the object, not this word coincides. We shall see how, how helpful it is. Draw a red diagram to show how the final image is formed. Then to determine the focal length of the diverging lens. So when you see the word coincides, it means that the rays will be reflected back along the same path that is what should be first in your mind okay so shall come here and say for the concave mirror f1 is 15 therefore the radius of curvature of the concave mirror will be, remember these are mirrors so radius of curvature is twice the focal length which is 30 centimeters so now that i've got the radius of curvature as 30 we can come and draw our ray diagram. So you draw a diverging lens and a converging mirror. Then you put locate an object. Then rays from the object will meet the diverging lens. And these rays will be diverged to meet the converging mirror. So and this so these rays will appear to come from a point I1, which is there. Okay. But remember they told us that the final image coincides with the object, meaning these rays must travel back along the same path. For them to travel back along the same path, it implies that they strike the converging mirror at 90 degrees. That is, and because they strike at 90 degrees, they'll be reflected back along the same path to form an image at the same location as the object. That's what they mean by coincides. And from the knowledge of plane of curved mirrors, we know that when the ray strikes at 90 degrees, it implies that it is reflected to con it is ref it will it came from the center of curvature so this i1 is at the center of curvature of the converging mirror therefore the distance from i1 to the mirror is equal to the radius of curvature which you have calculated so you come and say that that distance from i1 to the plane mir converging mirror is 30 centimeters so they told us that the plane mirror is 20 centimeters from the lens, meaning the separation between the lens and the plane mirror is, sorry, and the converging mirror is 20 centimeters. And the balance will now be 30 minus 20, minus 20 to give you 10. 
Then they told us that the object is 20 centimeters in front of the diverging lens. So she'll come and put the 20 centimeters here. So using the diverging lens, we now have the object this we have the object which is 20 and the image which is 10. Meaning we can now get the f. So using the thinness formula, we can get the value of f as that. And that's what they wanted here. Question 2 came from your name, 2003, paper 2, question 1, C, Roman 2, and says, A concave lens of focal length 20 cm is placed 10 cm in front of a concave mirror of focal length 16 cm. Calculate the distance from the lens at which the object would coincide with its image. So, you come as that for a concave mirror, focal length is that, meaning radius of curvature is 32. When you have it, you can now draw our ray diagram. So, the ray diagram is somewhat similar to the one in question 1. So, we have a diverging lens and a concave converging mirror. We shall have an object, rays from the object meet the diverging lens, where they are diverged. To meet the concave mirror and the diverged rays appear to come from point I1, which is this. Mm -hmm. Now, because of coincidence, it means that these rays strike at 90 degrees. Therefore, it, the reflected ray travels back along the same path to meet to coincide with the object. So, we are given the radius of curvature which will be now 32 then the separation was 10 the balance will now be 32 minus 10 which is 22 so they want this value of u which we don't know yet so using the diverging lens we have the focal length, it is negative because it is diverging. And we have the image, which is negative because it is virtual. Use, meaning you can use thinness formula to come up with the object distance which they wanted. Negative meaning it is virtual. Then question 3 came from your name 2016 paper 2 question 2 serum and 2 and says a concave lens of focal length 15 centimeters is arranged coercially with a concave mirror of focal length 10 centimeters a distance of 4 centimeters apart an object is placed 20 centimeters in front of the lens and the side on the side remote from the mirror find the distance of the final image from the lens so here we have to be keen because it is a little tricky so for action of the concave concave lens remember the ray first strikes the concave lens then the mirror so for the concave lens we shall form the first image so we already know the f, we know u, we can get v using a thinness formula to give you v1 as that. It is negative meaning it is virtual. So now that we know the image, the position of the first image, we can come and draw our sketch. So we have a diverging lens here and we have a converging mirror there. We shall put our object here. So rays from the object will strike the diverging lens and they will be diverged in that form to appear as if they come from this point. And that will be our position of the first image I1. 
Then at this mirror, they have not talked about any coincidence. Remember in question 1 and question 2, they said the object coincides with the final image. But here they have not, not talked about anything about coinciding, meaning here, from here, it is also reflected to meet again the diverging lens. In absence of this diverging lens, it would, uh, it would go up to this point, and that would be the position of image 2. But because of the diverging lens, the ray is diverged to meet at this point. So that is the final image. So the object distance, it was given as 20. Then the separation of the lenses, it was given as 4. Okay, then we already got the position of the second first image, meaning from here up to here, it is 8.7514. Okay. Therefore, from here up to here gives you this plus 4 to give you 12.7514. Then from I2 to this mirror, we don't know it, so we shall call it V2. From I2 to the diverging lens, we don't know it, so we shall call it U3. And from I3 to the diverging lens, we don't know it, so we shall call it V3. Okay. So, rem so now here, let's first go back. In this diagram, this object, this image I1 acts as the object for the, remember I1 was got by due to the lens, diverging lens then i2 was got due to the converging mirror therefore i1 is the object to the converging mirror meaning that for the converging mirror object distance is from here up to here and that is the reason why we got this distance okay then the image distance is from here up to here and we don't know it that is why we called it v2 so we have the F, we have the U, we can get the V. So let's go and get the V. So thinless formula will be able to get the value of V as this. Okay. Now I've got V to what about v3 so we shall come back to our diagram and say after getting this v2 this i2 acts as the object of this diverging lens to form image i3 so for this diverging lens u3 is from here up to here that is why you are seeing it here and the good thing we know that this plus this 4 gives you v2 which i have already calculated so we can easily get u3. After getting u3, we know the focal length, then we can get v3. So shall come here and say that is f u3 and we need v3. Using thinness formula, we can get the value of v3 as that. Then question four, question four is also somewhat similar to question three, it says only that this one is done, it is the reverse. So you came from your neighbor 2010 paper to question 1b and says, a concave mirror of focal length 10 centimeters is arranged coercially with a concave lens of focal length 15 centimeters placed 10 centimeters from the mirror. An object three centimeters tall is placed in front of the concave lens and its image is formed on a screen 40 centimeters away from the lens. Roman 1. 
find the position of the image Roman 2 what is the height of the image formed in Roman 3 explain what would happen if the lens was replaced with a similar one but of much smaller focal length so still here we shall need to make a sketch it is the sketch is similar to the one we have drawn so we shall arrange our diverging lens and the converging mirror then we shall put our object somewhere then rays will go and meet the diverging lens they will be diverged to meet the plane to meet the converging mirror and that diverged ray will appear to come from point i1 then because of this mirror they will be refracted to meet the diverging lens again and in absence of this diverging lens the ray would converge at point i2 but because of this diverging lens the ray is diverged to meet at point i3 so u the object distance we don't know it so we shall call it u1 the separation is 10 then from here up to here we don't know it so i call it v1 and from here to here we don't know it so i call it u2 from here up to here we don't know it we shall call it v2 we shall, we shall get all these parameters don't worry then from here to here u3 from here to here is 40 so this is what we are given meaning we are going to work in the reverse way so we are going to begin with action of this lens to obtain i3 so using this lens the object image distance will be from here up to here which is 40 and object distance will be from here up to here which is u3 and the focal length is negative 15 so we have focal length and v so there are meaning we can get our u and that will be the value of u3 so after getting this value of u3 and you know this you can get v2 so action of the second of the concave mirror to obtain the second image f is that v2 is good by adding this to this to give you that okay meaning i can use thinness formula to come up with to come up with the object the value of v2 so using the thinness formula we shall come up with the value of u2 as that so now we have u2 so if we go back to our diagram now we have the value of u2 and we know the separation meaning we can get this value of v1 and when you have v1 and we have when you have v1 and we have this f we can be able to get u1 So f is there, v1 is there, meaning I can get u1 using thinness formula. Come up with u1 as that. So the object is this in front of the lens. That was Roman 1. Then when you go to Roman 2, what is the height of the image formed so there we have to first get the magnification so magnification you add multiply all the three images m1 m2 and m3 so substitute this first magnification second magnification third magnification to give you this 
after that we shall remember that magnification is the same as image height over object height therefore making image height the subject it is magnification times object height magnification object height to give you image height then Roman 3 Roman 3 says explain what would happen if the lens was replaced with a similar one but of much smaller focal length So the lens, if the lens was replaced with one with a smaller focal length, the final image would be bigger. And why is it so? It is because for smaller focal length, the light rays are diverged more. And the magnifi magnifying power 1 over f of the lens is larger. So that's what they wanted. So now we shall go to combine focal length of two thin lenses in contact. So sometimes the lenses can be put in contact. And here we shall consider a ray of P originally parallel and close to the principal axis and incident on the lens combination, the ones which are in contact, at a small height h above the, the axis as shown below. So let's illustrate that. So the lenses can be either convex and concave, but here we have chosen to use both are convex. But the formula which we are going to derive can be used for all. So this is the ray OP, which is part of the principal axis. This ray will first be refracted to, to converge by this lens L1. So in absence of any of the lenses, this will be the direction of this ray. But because of this lens L1, it will be refracted in that way. And, to, uh, and be, if this lens L2 was absent, this ray would have continued up to this point here. But because of the presence of the second lens, the ray is refracted further to reach this point. That means that the total deviation will be from here up to here. And this is the focal length of F1 because this ray was parallel, therefore it will be refracted to converge at the principal focus. So this F1 is the focal length of the first lens. And from the midpoint of these lenses to this point where the image, final image is, is the focal length of the combined. Because for, the, for this ray to be refracted to reach here, the refraction was by both this, this lens L1 and this lens L2. So that will become the focal length of the, that becomes the combined focal length of these two lenses. And the deviation D1 is a deviation due to lens L1. Then D2 is the deviation. So, so by alternating angles, this will be equal to that. And D2 is the deviation by this lens L2. Therefore, in total, we shall come up with the whole of this as the total deviation of the ray, which is D. So total deviation is D1 plus D2. And for small angles expressed in radians, tan D is approximately equal to D. That means that if I want to get D, I'll use tan opposite over adjacent. Opposite is from here T, which is H, as we are told in the equation, over adjacent, which is from here up to here, which is F. Then when you come to D1, D1 is here. So it will be H over from here to here, which is F1. Then similarly, D2 will be H over F2. 
this D2 here. But we don't the good but we don't know this F2, so we shall see the relationship between F1, F, F1 and F2. So from equation one, we shall come up with this. So come and substitute for D, substitute for D1, substitute for D2. And when you can this H is common. So we can cancel it to come up with this. So this is the expression for the combined focal length of two lenses. This one is for one lens only, one lens only. Then when you combine, you come up with F. So this one lies, we shall be use it, we shall use it frequently in this part. And it works for the all all types of lenses. Here we have used two converging lenses, but can it can be one converging and one diverging or both diverging the formula is the same so with that we shall go through these questions question one came from 2009 paper 2 question 1a from Antoine says a compound lens consists of two lenses in contact having powers positive 12.5 diopter and negative 2.5 diopter Find the position and nature of the image of the object placed 15 centimeters from the compound lens. So positive means it has a positive focal length and negative means it has a negative focal length, meaning this positive one is converging lens and this negative one is a diverging lens. So you come and try to illustrate that. So one converging and one diverging. Then we shall put our object there. And this object raised from the object will meet the first lens. And the first lens will refract them in that way. And in absence of this second lens, it, they should have, this ray would have continued up this point I1. But because of that second lens, the rays are diverged to meet further away from I1, which is this point. So this becomes the object distance and the image distance for the combined lens is from here up to here. So you have come and first get the combined focal length 1 over F1. Remember power over lens is 1 over F as long as F is in meters. That means that this F we are going to get will be in meters, but you can convert to centimeters because this object distance is in centimeters. So now that I have F and I have U, I can get V from the thin lens formula. And that gives me, gives me V as 30, and that's what they wanted, the position. Then the nature, because it is positive, then the object is real. And magnified because u u was 15 and v is 30 so it was magnified then question 2 says a small object is placed at a distance of 60 centimeters to the left of a diverging lens of focal length 30 centimeters a converging lens is then placed in contact with a diverging lens if a real image is formed at a distance of 20 centimeters to the right of the combined lens, find the focal length of the converging lens. So in the question one, it was first converging followed by diverging. Now here it is first diverging, then converging. So you first put a, a diverging lens, then followed by a converging lens. Therefore, the object here rays will reach the diverging lens. And they will be refracted to diverge. And those rays will appear to come from this point. But because of this second lens, the rays will converge to meet at point I2. Therefore, this becomes the object distance from here to here. 
and from here to here is the image distance of the combined lenses. So now that we have U and V, we can easily get F, the combined focal length. And after getting the combined focal length, we can get the focal length of the converging lens. So you come and first get the combined focal length, which is 1 over U plus 1 over V to give you F as 15. And from there, we shall remember that combined focal length will be equal to 1 over F1 plus 1 over F2, therefore... 1 over f2 will be 1 over f minus 1 over f1. That gives you f2 as 10 centimeters, and that's what they wanted. Question 3 says, a compound lens consists of two converging lenses in contact, having, a fo having focal lengths of 30 and 20. Find the position, nature, and nature of the image of an object placed 24 centimeters from the compound lens. So these are both converging lenses, so we shall first draw two converging lenses in contact. Then we shall place our object somewhere and rays will reach the first converging lens. And they will be converged in that way. And in absence of the second lens, the rays would have converged at this point. But because of the second lens, the rays will be converged, refracted further to converge at I2. So that means that this is our U from here to here. And from here to here is our V. So knowing F1 and F2, we can get the combined focal length, which we can use to get the value of V. So shall come and say combined focal length will become 12 centimeters and therefore we can use it to get the value of V. 1 over V is equal to 1 over F minus 1 over U to give you V as 24. So the one the position, that's the position, then the nature. Because V is positive, it is real. And because this V is bigger than, it is the same, so it is not magnified. It is same size, so you can change this and say same size. Same size, not magnified. Okay. So that was combined for calling. Now we shall go to what we call lens makers formula. So this is a little unique from the thin lens formula which I've been using, but you shall understand it. So lens makers formula is a formula which uses the deviation of a small angled prism to express the focal length f of a lens in terms of relative index, ref refractive index of the lens material n and the red eye R of curvature R1 and R2 of its surface. So this is called refractive and relative. So under prisms, we already covered small angled prisms. So the formula, lens formula, or the lens maker's formula can be written in this form. So this one can be derived based on the knowledge of small angled prism. But like I said, told you here, we are interested in what can take us to the calculations. But full notes are available in the books I told you to buy. So this is the formula and can be they can ask you to derive it, but what you want is that 1 over f, which is the focal length, is equal to n, which is the refractive index, minus 1 plus 1 over r1, which is one of the refractive surface, and r2, we shall see these refracting surfaces in the next slide, and how to get them, because usually they give them to you. So the signs of the red eye of curvature of the lenses. So this one can be positive or negative. And how do you know that it's positive or negative? This is what we're going to see. So the radius of curvature is positive if the surface is curved outwards. It's in this form. It is positive. 
but if the surfaces are negative, if the surface is curved inwards, so if it's in, the, it's in this form, it is negative, as we shall see in the next slide. So for the types of lenses below, the signs of the red eye of curvature in air are as indicated. So we shall see how you can understand this. The sign. Here it is curved outward and also here outward, meaning both R1 and R2 are positive for a biconvex lens. So when they give you a biconvex lens, they have to know that both R1 and R2 will be positive. What if they give you a plano convex lens? This one is curved outward, meaning it is positive, but this one is flat, meaning it is infinity. So plano convex lens, R1 is infinity, R2 is positive. What about a converging meniscus? Here, this is curved inward, so it is negative. Outward, so it is positive. Then for a concave lens, this is inward, negative, inward, negative. Then plano concave lens, this is straight, meaning it is infinity. Inward, meaning it is negative. Diverging meniscus, this is negative, inward, and this is outward, positive. So based on the type of the lens given, you can easily understand what should be negative and what should be positive. So it's advisable to first make a sketch. And with that, we shall go through the questions. Question 1 came from your name, 2020, paper 2, question 1b, Roman 2. And it says, the red eye of curvature of the surface of a converging meniscus now here they are giving us a converging meniscus are 25 and 20 centimeters find its focal length if the refractive index of the lens is 1.5 so like i told you we shall first need to make a sketch so that we know what is positive and what is negative so this is curved outward meaning it will be positive this is curved inward meaning it will be negative and now that we know that, we shall come and quote the formula. Substitute n is 1.5, r1 is positive, r2 is negative. So in the end, we shall come up with 1 over f being equal to 1 over 200. And when I get the reciprocal, f will be 200. And that's what they wanted. Then question 2. Came from your name 2013, but to question 2b Roman 2 and says the figure below, which is this, shows a glass convex lens in air with surfaces A and B having red eye of curvature of magnitudes 10 centimeters and 15 centimeters respectively. So this 10 is for this part and 15 is for this part. If the refractive index of the glass material used is 1.5 calculate the focal length and power of the lens so yeah they have already sketched for us so there is no need what you need to know is that this one is positive and this is negative and n is 1.5 so i'll come and substitute for n for r1 for r2 to come up with 1 over f being equal to 1 over 60 Therefore, reciprocal gives you f equal to 60. But they also wanted power over length. Remember, power is reciprocal of focal length in meters. So, come and convert this to meters by multiplying by 10 to power negative 2. And that gives me 1.6667 diopter as the power of the lens. So now this knowledge of combined lenses in contact can be used to obtain the refractive index of a small quantity of liquid using a convex lens and a plane mirror. So in this we shall go through some of the procedure which can be taken and then we shall go to the calculations. First, a plane mirror is laid on a table with its reflecting face upwards and a thin biconvex lens of non radius of curvature is placed on it. Okay, we shall see the illustration. 
An optical pin O is clamped horizontally in a retort stand above the lens so that its tip lies along the principal axis of the lens. So first of all, the first illustration is this. Let's first go through this illustration. So you have a lens, a plane mirror, and a lens. Then we shall have an object pin placed along the principal axis of the lens. So they said the pin is then moved up and down vertically while viewing from above, and the point is located where the pin coincides. Now we've been talking about this word coincides, and I believe by now you know what it means. Coincides with its image, I and there is no parallax between them. So when it coincides, it means the ray travel back along the same path. And what should be the condition? So first of all, these are the rays. They will be refracted to meet the plane mirror at 90 degrees. That is the only condition with which they can travel back. So when they meet, they will travel back along the same path to form an image at the same point as the object. Now, because these rays are parallel, it implies the distance from the lens to the object is the focal length of the lens. So we shall measure it, and that will be f1, which is the focal length of the lens. After getting that, so the distance f1 of the pin from the lens is measured and recorded. And this is the focal length of the biconvex lens. That's what I've told you. Then next, we shall now put a small, so a small quant of the test liquid is placed on the plane mirror and a thin biconvex lens placed on top of the liquid. So let's illustrate that. So you have a plane mirror, then you have a liquid, and then you have a convex lens. Plane mirror, liquid, and a convex lens. Then you shall put a, an object along the principal axis. Okay, so you shall see. The procedure is repeated and the distance f of the pin from the glass liquid. Now we have a glass liquid lens. Initially it was just a glass lens, which was the convex lens, but now we have a glass liquid lens because we have added the liquid. This is the combined focal length of the glass liquid lens. So let's see that. So when it coincides, it means it travels back along the same path. Therefore, it must meet the plane mirror at 90 degrees. So it travels back along the same path to form an image at the same point as the object. So this distance is what we call the combined focal length of these two. Now this one is like, so first of all, this one is a convex lens. And this one is a plano concave lens. So considering the glass liquid lens, we shall come up with that type of lens. First is a the one up is the concave lens, and one down is a plano convex plano. The one up is the con convex lens, and the one down is the plano concave lens. Therefore, this combined focal length will be f1, 1 over f1 plus 1 over f2 to give you 1 over f. So, with that, remember we know f1 and we know f, meaning we can get f2, which is the focal length of this liquid lens. Let's 
liquid lens only okay that is when you are considering both what if you are considering a biconvex lens only we shall know that this one is positive radius and this one is positive radius and they are the same because it is by convex lens therefore the formula will be in that form now here we are using ng which is the refractive index of glass or refractive index of this by convex lens material and know that r1 and r2 are equal and this is the focal length of the by convex lens or the glass lens then when you are considering the liquid lens only, we shall come up with that shape. And in this case, this is negative R and this is infinity because it is. Now this, this is negative R because here the, uh, the, the radius is the same. It's only the sign which will change. There was still the form, same formula we, we shall use, only that here we shall use F2 and here we shall use liquid, refractive index of the liquid. Here R1 is this, R2 is this. So with that we can easily get the refractive index of the liquid. We first get F2 from this. Then we can get R from this. Then we can get NL from this lens maker's formula. As we shall see in the calculations. So question 1 came from your name 1995 paper 2 question 2b and it says... A biconvex lens of radius of curvature 24 centimeters is placed on a liquid film on a plane mirror. The pin clamp, a pin clamped horizontally above the lens coincides with this image at a distance of 40 centimeters above the lens. So this will be now the combined focal length because already the liquid lens is there. If the refractive index of the liquid is 1.4 what is the refractive index of the material of this glass material so we shall first make an illustration we have a liquid film which is the liquid lens and also the glass lens which is the biconvex lens So for the liquid lens only, refractive index is 1.4, focal length is not known, R1 is known. Because of this, remember we said they have the same radius only that the sign changes. So for the liquid lens, this one is negative because it is curved inwards. And the one down is flat, meaning it is infinity. Therefore, you come and substitute in the lens maker's formula. N is 1.4, R1 is negative 24, R2 is infinity. So 1 over infinity is 0. So that cancels. So we have now here, which is 0 0.4 times negative 1 over 24 to give you negative 1 over 60. Meaning F1 is negative 60 centimeters. After getting F1, we shall come and say that the combined focal length is 40 according to the question. Therefore, we can get F2, which is the focal length of the biconvex lens using the formula for combined focal length. So 1 over F2 is equal to 1 over F minus 1 over F1. F is there, F1 is there to give you this. Therefore, reciprocal will give you F2 as 24 centimeters. Now that I have F2, I can now use the biconvex lens alone. Here I have F2, I have R1, I have R2, meaning I can get N2, which is the refractive index of the material they want. So that is the thin lens, lens maker's formula. I'll come and substitute. F1 is there, N2 is what I don't want, R1 is there, R2 is there. So this one, when I add, I come up with 1 over 12. Here it remains as it is. Then when I take this 12 of this side, I'll come up with 0 0.5 and it will be N2 minus 1, meaning N2 is 1.5 and that's what they wanted. Then question 2 came from your name, 2009 paper 2, question 1b, and it says, An equiconvex lens 
is placed on a horizontal plane mirror and a pin held vertically above the lens is found to coincide with its image position 20 centimeters above the lens. So this coincidence is for only the convex lens alone, meaning this is the focal length of the equi-convex lens. Okay. When a few drops of liquid is placed between the lens and the mirror, the pin had to be raised 10 centimeters to obtain coincidence with the image. Okay. If the refractive index of the convex lens is 1.5, find the refractive index of the liquid lens. So we shall make a sketch of the liquid lens and the equiconvex lens. And with that illustration, you can go through the questions. So for calling of the equiconvex lens, we know it is 20. According to the question, then the combined focal length limit was raised 10, 10 centimeters above. So it will be 20, which is initial position, plus 10 to give you 30. So let F2 be the focal length of the liquid, meaning 1 over F2 can be 1 over F minus 1 over F1. Getting the reciprocal gives you F2 as 60 centimeters. Then for the equiconvex lens, we know that relative index is 1.5. F1 is 20, R1 and R2 are equal to R, which we don't know. But we can get. So we shall code the formula, let's make us formula, then substitute for F1, N, and these two, when you add them, will come up with 2 over R. So when I simplify, I make R the subject, I'll come up with 20 centimeters as the radius of curvature of the equiconvex lens. Therefore, now for the liquid lens, N2 is not known, F2 is negative 60, R1 is negative 20, and R2 is infinity. Therefore, come and quote the formula and then substitute F2, R1, R2. So 1 over infinity is 0, so this becomes negative 1 over 20, which is here. And when I take this one this side, I'll come up with that. And make n to the subject to come up with that as the answer they wanted. So question three says two equiconvex lenses of focal length 20 centimeters are placed in contact, and the space between them is filled with water. Okay. If the relative index of glass is 3 over 2 and that of water is 4 over 3, find the focal length of the combination. So yes, still we need to make an illustration. We have an equiconvex lens, liquid lens, and equiconvex lens. Okay. So for the equiconvex lens, F1 we know is, it has 20, N1, when N we know it as 3 over 2, and R1 and R2 are equal, and to be R. So we shall call the lens maker's formula and substitute. So with that, you can easily make, so F1 is here, N1 is here. This and this, city, when you add the 2, you come up with 2 over R. So that means I can make R the subject, and that would be the radius of curvature of this equiconvex lens. Then for the water lens, remember it has two surfaces, so this is negative R and negative R. That's why you see here, R1 is got R2 and is got negative R. But R was 20, meaning negative R is negative 20. So shall come and quote the formula, then sub simplify. So this and this, these two can simplify to give you this. And this one is that. 
So shall come and substitute for n2, which is 4 over 3, r, which is negative 20, to give you 1 over neg negative 1 over 30. That means that f2 is negative 30 centimeters. Therefore, the focal length f of the combination can be got from this formula. And that gives you f as 15. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded the next video will be on optical instruments. So if you have not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button so that you receive updates when the next video has been uploaded. And also, if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform, please share the link of this video with them by social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp so that can all benefit us a family.